Ladies and gentlemen, come on, we knew it was going to happen. We knew that AMD were going to be doing this. AMD have been spotted to be shipping a dual Fiji XT graphics card. That's right, when one GPU featuring high bandwidth memory is not enough, what do you do? You double those suckers up. That's what you do. Now, I'm not exactly shocked that this is happening. Of course, we know that uh, NVIDIA are doing much the same thing. They're releasing a dual version of their GPU, although the exact core isn't known. It is going to be utilizing pretty much the same one that is in the 980 Ti slash the same one that's in the Titan. So AMD doing this is not very surprising. So, it is codenamed Gemini, and we know that this is actually happening because, once again, a shipping manifest has given away its existence. Indeed, it says printed circuit board assembly slash graphics card attached with a cooler master heatsink, and that's pretty much it. It does also hint at the price. Converted, it probably means that the GPU is going to be between $1,000 to $1,100, but obviously that's pure speculation based upon the value that's listed in the shipping manifest, and, well... What is there to say about this? I mean, come on, we knew that AMD were going to be doing this eventually because it just makes sense. Now, the Dual Fury XT should theoretically pack over 8,000 stream processors. How many exactly? Well, 8,192. This is all dependent, of course, if some of those CUs have been disabled, but theoretically it's looking like it's not going to be, which means that's 128 compute units. That's a lot of compute units. That's a lot of power. How much power? Well, this is going to put out over 17 T-flops of performance. We can actually do that math rather easily. Obviously, this will depend upon the clock speed before anyone points that out, but the Fury XT boasts about 8.6 T-flops of performance, that's well documented, so all you have to do is just double that. It's possible that, along with many other dual uh, graphics cards, clock speeds may be a slightly diminished or number of shaders are slightly diminished, but assuming that that's not the case, 17 T-flops plus of performance, which is absolutely mental, that is that is ludicrous. What will that mean? Well, theoretically, 4K resolution gets smashed into orbit. Of course, next generation games maybe not, and there are some problems with the 4GB frame buffer, but for those gamers who are looking for the absolute highest frame rates, particularly for a small form factor design system, you can't really ask for much more than that in the R9 Gemini. Now, it's possible that it's going to be pretty much the same cooling solution that they used in the R9 Fury X. It looks like it. Hopefully the pump wine issue is going to be resolved as many people uh, noticed that and it was a bit of a disappointment considering that the one of the one of the the positives one of the you know I guess selling points of the Fury was that it was going to be fairly silent in operation that just didn't end up happening. And in fact, quite a few people did end up RMAing the thing, and it, it became a bit of a mess. But let's stay on the positive side for now. It's a very powerful GPU, it really is. I've mentioned before that currently it's a really weird time in the GPU industry. It, it honestly is absolutely just odd. Not just because we know about high bandwidth memory 2 and DirectX 12, but we've got all this whole asynchronous thing which is popping up. Windows 10's introduction shaped up the PC gaming landscape. We've got, of course, the ludicrous amount of performance over the next couple of generations of GPUs with high bandwidth memory. Plus, of course, die shrinks, which are going to definitely be a big factor. And so, some people are going to say, well, you know what, this GPU, absolutely not. I'm happy with my 980 or my 780 Ti or my, you know, R9 290 or whatever you've got, which is a really good point of view. But for those who are looking for a GPU for a small form factor and you want to buy now, it's a very compelling GPU to, to uh, go against it. To be honest, I think this is also a case of... Nvidia and AMD both know that the other one was going to release it, so you have to release the dual solution so that you don't get absolutely decimated in the very top end stakes. It's kind of like a pride thing as well. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video.
not much to say about this one other than it's going to be interesting to see what happens in terms of performance. Most of this probably will come down to the final clock speeds as well as the driver revisions. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.